today we're gonna talk about lowering your front of your bay window in this case is a early bay and um, what I'm gonna show you is what I like to do to get a good driver uh, out of a, a old thing like this so uh, let's begin an early bay is running with a type 1 old styled uh, beam with uh, leaf springs inside so there's a leaf spring goes from this side over here and it's fixed in the center with a little um, pinion uh, screw that holds the, the leaf springs inside the beam a uh, normal procedure if you just want a, a lowering drop job there's two ways to do this and that is with adjustable brackets uh, you can weld on with a little knowledge it's possible but uh, be sure you do some proper welds because it's holding the completely weight of the car so the other job you can do to lowering your front end is by drop spindles and there is a lot of different brands uh, some of them I don't particularly like that well and that's the welded ones where you check and that's where we take two different spindles and weld them together example um, this is an early bay this is a late bay and this is a new drop spindle what people do I don't say it's not uh, safe but I don't like them it's where you cut them here and somebody move the center point up by mixing two different spindles together there are some where you can get flip, spin, flip spindles. So this is kind of the way they'll, they sit on a, a bus and um, the ball joints go from up here and down and from here and up. And there are some companies that make flip spindles where you, instead of the, the ball joint go this way, it go this way. That way your whole section of your spindle is, is dropped uh, about, I don't know, two, three inches. But what I don't like about it is all your all your load will be on the ball joint the opposite way that it should be. So here is the way it should be. That might, that I'm missing a little um, caster ball here. But somebody has done like this and flipped them. So all the load is this way up. And as you can see, the ball joint is meant to be with the force going this way from right to left. So if you flip them, all the weight is going to be here and potentially you can yeah, lose your ball joint. I know they make a groove and uh, I have seen some of the tack weld, so, so um, they kind of hold the ball joint in. I'm not saying it's not good, but it's a little risky if you ask me. I know it sometimes takes up to 20, 40 tons to press out these uh, ball joints, so they are pretty good um, locked in, but I'm not a fan. Um, then there is new drop spindles from um, both MP and uh, Jodepri Group, JHJB Group in uh, Denmark is making them, probably some Chinese ones, I don't know. But um, the bad thing about this is this is only for late bay as you can see there's brackets for uh, for the disc brake like uh, like this one so yeah you i know i won't, wouldn't say you kind of locked into the spindles uh, situation situation but i have found way to make an um, early bay drum fit on this one because believe it or not this one is the same on this one, on a late bay, or on an early bay, it's the problem is the offset from uh, this, these points. They are a bit different, but luckily they have made them just as far, so you can make an adapter. And I'm working on it um, to get them done, so you can bolt on your um, early bay uh, plates or brakes on this one. So. But again, the stopping power isn't uh, isn't a bad thing. So if you want to keep your big uh, center bolt pattern, it's possible to set a disc, put a disc brakes on, and an adapter 
to uh, to the old um, ball pattern. I use this on my um, single cab as well. It's not that bad. It works pretty good, but uh, it's not legal in all countries. So you see here, I both have for for, for Porsche and for the old style um, ball pattern. So this is kind of the setup I talked about. This is a drop spindle from uh, Jod H Group in Viborg. This breaks from a late bay adapter to to um, to Porsche and the big ball pattern. But these drop spindles have a little problem, and that is they uh, whiting the, the the white tracks of the car, the fully length, the width of the car, uh, by one and a half centimeter or 15 millimeter per side. So you have to compromise for that, either by yeah, fitting uh, wheels with a higher ET, or do what I do, narrow the beam. Uh, yeah. Just a little bit. It doesn't have to be much, but uh, it always comes to um, a max on a on a bay window anyway, because there's not a lot of room for um, for the shocks. So you can see here they are pretty much line up, and I'm not talking about this one. Oh, this one to this one is pretty tight. So I'm in the max uh, narrowing on this one, keeping the original stock uh, shock mount there's a way to do that there are some companies making a little bracket you can uh, move the shock inside here and then you can narrow a little bit more it's not much but uh, you have a little more room to to play with here so a narrow beam uh, compensate for the drop spindles and make a make it uh, better for wheels with higher E.T. or wider rims. I don't think I'm I'm lying when I say if you look at this one, it's pretty much where the original wheel will sit if it was a beam that was not narrowed. I uh, always say if you're inside this one, you're good. You can see I'm just there, so that's okay. I found out in a couple of years ago, these uh, stabilizers can be turned upside down and put in the top of your beam or trading arms so you get more clearance because these tend to get really, really low to the ground. This is not a super slam car, but uh, I always do this so you get some more yeah, cl ground clearance, if you will. What I'm missing with the new beams or even narrowed beams, I usually buy two left um, steering racks because original on a, a bay, then there's one side is fixed, so you cannot adjust it. So if you buy two left ones, you have uh, adjustability in both sides. It makes it a little more easier to do uh, alignment on it. So that's my way to do it. What is an narrowed beam? An narrowed beam is where the torsion bar is cut down, shortened in in, um, in width. So I would guess the original one will be the cap here, which will probably be out here. So I have a, a side difference about yeah four centimeter, four and a half centimeters per side, narrow. That makes your wheels get inside and not sit right out to the edge of the the front fenders. Um, and in this case, as I said before, if you have drop spindles, get them back in uh, where they should be. Many of the wheels you can buy, aftermarket wheels, have a low ET. Because uh, if you take a 15 inch uh, BM reel, it's probably 23, I think. And this 17 is uh, 45, so they have a good, uh, yeah, good tuck in. Um, already but again if i hadn't made a adjustable and narrow beam the wheels will be out here somewhere so um, i'm pretty much only thing i did is get it back in the uh, in the spot where it was original so i like it that way there's people the narrow 
much more. I was one of those person before, but uh, not anymore. Now I'm just more or less getting back where they were, back where they should be, like original. <laughs>